If I pull this mass on a spring and I release it, it will oscillate at its natural frequency. That can be determined prop using the properties of the spring, for example, the spring constant and the mass that's attached. If I pull this mass on a pendulum and I release it, it will oscillate at its natural frequency, and that natural frequency can be determined using this equation with the gravitational field strength and the length. So natural frequency is the frequency at which systems oscillate if displaced and allowed to oscillate freely. So by freely, I mean without any resistive forces or any uh, apply external force being applied to the system. Okay, so everything has a natural frequency at which it oscillates. For example, this car, if I come along and I push this car, it will oscillate up and down at some natural frequency. And that natural frequency is going to be determined, for example, by the stiffness of the suspension and the mass of the car. A building like this, for example, will have a natural frequency. If, if wind blows on it, then it will sway left and right uh, at its natural frequency. And that natural frequency can be determined, for example, by the height of the building or the materials made out of and the ground it's on. Build um, bridges like this have a natural frequency. So maybe a, a wind blows on it again and then it causes it to sway left and right at some natural frequency determined by the system. And then a, a glass of wine like this, if I hit it with a spoon, then it will vibrate at some particular frequency. And even molecules like this, for example, water, it will the bonds can sh uh, vibrate at a particular frequency. And that is determined by the strength of the bond and the mass of molecules, for example. Okay, so different to the natural frequency, we've got the driving frequency. This is the frequency at which a periodic force is applied to a system. So for example, we've got a mass spring system oscillating up and down here, and I can come along and push it at a certain frequency. So for example, maybe I can push it at 5 hertz. So that would be the driving frequency. I'm pushing it 5 times every second. Uh, here we've got a person on a swing, and someone else is coming along, and they're pushing that. They're applying a force to that uh, swing. And they can push it at any frequency. It doesn't have to match the frequency of the person on the swing. Here we've got uh, wind blowing on trees, and the wind can shake the trees at a different frequency to, to the frequency at which the tree normally uh, shakes. So for example, the gusts could be maybe 10 hertz, sh shaking the trees 10 times every second. Okay, so like sound waves produced by these speakers can apply a periodic force to different objects that are in front of the speakers. So depending on the frequency that's being played by the speakers, that will be the frequency at which the object is being driven. Then we've got earthquakes here, yeah, and these are called seismic waves. And these seismic waves have uh, be produced at a certain frequency, and this will be the frequency at which they shake buildings and other objects, the driving frequency. Then we've got electromagnetic waves here. Yeah. So depending on the electromagnetic waves, so for example, radio waves would cause charged particles to oscillate and be pushed up and down at a certain frequency. Here we have a mass spring system that's oscillating at a natural frequency of 0.21 hertz. If I come along and I push it, and maybe I push it at a driving frequency that's very low, and it's going to cause it to oscillate with a small amplitude. And maybe I come along and I change in my mind and, and I push at a very high frequency. Again, actually the amplitude won't be that large. But if I push it at a certain frequency, which is equal to the natural frequency of the spring, so basically 0.21 hertz, then that's when I get the largest possible amplitude oscillations of the mass spring system. So this effect is known as resonance, where you get large amplitude oscillations when the driving frequency of the applied force is equal to the natural frequency of the system that you're applying the force to. And this is because this is under these conditions when you get the most efficient energy transfer from the object that's doing the driving to the system. In this case, the natural frequency of the swing is 0.40 hertz. If this person was blindfolded, and the person is pushing the swing, and they were pushing at maybe 0 0.1 uh, hertz, then the amplitude won't be that big. That frequency is too low. And maybe they pushed it at a higher frequency, a lot of pushes per second. Again, that won't be as effective. But when the drive frequency of the person pushing is equal to the natural frequency at which it is oscillating, which is what no, most people do naturally, they push it at the same time period and same frequency at which the swing goes back and forth. This is when you get the largest uh, amount of energy being transferred to the system and therefore you get the biggest amplitude oscillations. So this effect is known as resonance. Here's another example. So buildings have a natural frequency at which they shake. So here the tallest building is 0.10 hertz and the shortest building is 0.30 hertz. And we know seismic waves are produced at a certain frequency, earthquakes. And when these earthquakes go through this city, uh, they will shake the buildings as well. They'll apply a force, a periodic force to the buildings. If the frequency of the earthquake, the seismic wave, 
matches the frequency building, that's when it's going to shake with the largest amplitude. So in this case, the short building, which is 0 0.30 hertz, it will shake, but its amplitude won't be as big. And the one of the, the very tall building will shake as well, but its amplitude won't be that big. But the one in the middle, the one that has a natural frequency, which matches the frequency of the driving force from the uh, Earth's seismic wave, will shake with the largest amplitude. And therefore, it might get damaged and it could break. And this is what happened in Mexico um, a few years ago, where the buildings, uh, certain buildings were found to be damaged. And it turned out these buildings resonated. They had very large amplitude um, oscillations. And these were the short, shortest buildings and they were the tallest building. They happened to be a certain uh, height building, which matched the natural frequency of the seismic waves. Okay, here we have a wine glass and we know that wine glass they shake at a certain natural frequency if you hit them for example i'm going to put speakers in front of them. i'm going to play sound if i play sound at very low frequency the glass is fine it might shake a bit and if i play sound at very high frequency again the glass should be okay it will vibrate a bit but if i play frequency uh, of the sound equal to the natural frequency of the glass so 560 hertz here then this is this could cause the glass to vibrate so much that it breaks Again, this is resonance. The final example here, we've got water molecules. The bonds are vibrating at a certain natural frequency. So for example, in this case, it's around uh, 10 to the 14 hertz. And if I apply a electromagnetic wave, which could cause these bonds to shake even more, and the electromagnetic wave has the same frequency as the water molecules vibrational frequency here, natural frequency, it will cause it to shake the most. Uh, so it has to be a certain wavelength and certain type of ultraviolet wave. So in this case, it turns out to be infrared. But if I use gamma waves, it would not maybe not shake as much. If I used um, um, radio waves, it might not shake as much. So it has to be a particular frequency that causes it to resonate. Okay, here we're back to the mass spring example. Let's pretend this one oscillates at a natural frequency of 30 hertz. I'm going to apply periodic force to it at different frequencies. So I'm going to start off with 0 hertz and I'm going to go to 60 hertz. I'm going to plot a graph. I'm going to plot of the drive frequency on the x-axis. I'm going to plot the amplitude on the y-axis. So if I start with very low frequency, 0 to 10, it's going to oscillate with a certain amplitude. And if I increase the frequency at which I push it back and forth, uh, it's going to increase amplitude increases. And then I'm going to continue to increase. I'm going to go all the way up to 30 hertz. And that's when I get really large amplitude oscillations. And if I go beyond 30 hertz, well, actually, the amplitude of the oscillations actually decreases. So 30 hertz is where I get the largest amplitude oscillations, and that is resonance, okay? And it, that's when the driving frequency at which I'm pushing is equal to the natural frequency. So you get efficient energy transfer from the periodic force to the system there. And if I go beyond this again to uh, 60 hertz, again, the amplitude just decreases.